So ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm Iowa welcome to President Joe Biden. Putin's invasion of Ukraine has driven up gas prices and food prices all over the world. Approach used by During my conversations in Europe, um, we talked about what else we could do to ensure that we went after Russia's war machine and, ha and, and ensured that they had fewer resources going forward to prosecute their invasion in Ukraine. Um, and this included everything from looking at ways to go after the military devices that they're building to use not only in Ukraine, but to project power elsewhere. Also looking at ways that we could continue to put pressure on Russia's financial system in order to ensure that they had to spend more money propping up their economy rather than being able to invest that money in their war in Ukraine. President Putin a few weeks ago said that in response to our sanctions, the Russian economy was going to have to transform. What he didn't say was the quiet part out loud, which meant that this transformation would mean that the Russian economy is less flexible, it's smaller, it's less able to project power into the future. The way that we look for signs that they're working is you look at the data in Russia. And while the Kremlin has done a great job of trying to manipulate their currency and shutting down their stock market and making it hard for Russians to take money out of the country, the thing they've been unable to do is control some of the data that's coming out. Last week, um, data showed that new car sales in Russia had fall fallen by over 60 percent. Um, the IMF and independent forecasters expect the Russian economy to contract, to contract by more than 10 percent um, and that Russia's economy will get smaller over time due to the sanctions and export controls that we've put in place. So those are the signs that we see of the sanctions working.